Let's connect our web application to a live hosting URL so we no longer see that localhost 3000. Welcome back y'all. In this video, we're going to be going to part two here. Number two should be hosting. We're going to be setting up hosting with React. So we're going to go ahead and slash app stack. What we did in app stack was as a quick overview as we set up it in GitHub so we can access this through a Git. In addition, we set up our Firebase, which is going to be all of our backend logic. And if you just found this video, we're doing a ton of stuff here. Check out this series. Make sure you don't skip part one as that is where we're at right now. Therefore, let's do part two here. Let's set up hosting. To do so, go to Firebase, the project we set up in the first video. Go to project settings here, scroll down. This code right here is what it's gonna allow us to connect our Firebase to our React application. Obviously, some of it's gonna be blurred out because that is sensitive information. So two things we're gonna do in today's video. First thing, we're gonna create a .env. .env is for high risk variables. You'll see how we connect that. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect that to our application here so we can actually deploy to a live website link. Make sure you have terminal open, make sure you have it in the correct directory. For me, it's actual backend app. If you don't know what yours is, reference the cheat sheet we created in episode one. For me, it's just CD actual backend app. So here we'll make sure we're in the correct branch here, which we set up earlier, which is gonna be Firebase add. The first line you're gonna do is you're gonna need to install Firebase. So you're gonna do NPM install Firebase. I've already done this. Simply hit enter there. Next step, we're gonna come over here to source. We're gonna hit new file, Firebase. .js. In firebase.js, you're going to copy that high risk code I showed earlier. This code right here, simply hit copy, paste it over. Perfect. We have pasted over the code here. This is still going to be blocked here. Let's go ahead and create our env file. We'll right click source, new file, dot env. All right, let's go ahead and leverage cursor AI, make our lives easy. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do hit command L, control L. We're going to add our current file dot env. We're also going to add firebase.js. We're gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's import .env all relevant variables from firebase.js. Enter. This will be blurred out, but as you see, this is what we want. React underscore app underscore firebase and then the relevant information. Copy this and paste this into your .env. Then it gave us the correct firebase.js as well. Notice how we are referencing the .env in our front end now. The process .env react app firebase API key, which we notated in .env. These two are connected now. We're good to go. We set up some security measures. So far, so good. Come back to terminal. Before terminal, let's make sure we set everything we need to set up in hosting. We're gonna hit get started. You can find this, you're gonna go to build hosting. Let's just make sure you have all the fundamental stuff required for everything you're about to see from now. E.g. npm install dash g fire tools. Paste that line in there, hit enter. I've already done it, do the same. If you ever run into issues with npm, that means, or like basically it's like, what's an npm? You need to install Node.js, which I referenced in the first lesson. Now that we've done that, a good rule of thumb, anytime you start a developing day is going to be Firebase login, Firebase logout. So first I'm gonna log out because I am probably logged in. This is gonna give us the ability to access our project that we created and do a bunch of cool stuff. So first off, let's log out. Then we'll do Firebase login. The relevant email that we're gonna be logging into is the email that is associated with that Firebase project. Hit Y, here we go. So make sure you have the right email associated with your Firebase project. Hit continue. We're gonna hit allow and we're successfully logged in. Based off my experience in the past, what I would suggest you to do is anytime you start a new day, Firebase log out, Firebase log in, so you don't get random errors that you're just like, that's impossible, I know I did this correct. Just start your day like that. Kind of like starting your day with some coffee. Now let's go ahead and do Firebase init. This is going to allow us to initialize hosting. We're actually gonna use this same type of logic for everything else we'll do in the back end. What you'll notice is that this is where all of our back end functionalities and everything you're gonna see this entire series get played out. Oh yeah, and also, because I didn't really describe in this video, yeah, this entire series, you're getting full stack backend development. If you want front end, I have a whole separate playlist for that. For now though, we're gonna go to hosting, hit space, hit enter, use existing project. This, we're gonna go ahead and do actual backend app. This is the one that we created together. And it looks like it wants us to do a separate command in the beginning. So we do Firebase init hosting. Use an existing project, here we go. What do you wanna use as your public directory? We'll say public. Configure as a single page app, rewrite all URLs to index.html. I'm gonna hit no. Set up automatic builds and deploys to GitHub. This is not necessary, we're gonna hit no. File already exists, overwrite. We'll hit yes. There we go, we have successfully initialized hosting. Now let's just go ahead and confirm that we don't get that little glitch where it is a blank screen. And we got that little glitch. <laughs> let's fix it. Now how do we fix this? Now we're in a separate branch here, so we could roll back to main and be like, yo, we messed up. Or alternatively, let's go to GitHub. Notice how it's the index.html that's throwing this error. In GitHub here, we can go to the readme change, which is a previous branch commit. We haven't committed this one yet. And coming up here, I'm gonna hit browse files. There's gonna be all the files found within this commit. I'm gonna hit public. I'm gonna go to index.html. I'm gonna hit command A, command C, and paste this. Command save, and we're good to go. Use that as you will. This logic is very useful in the context that you don't wanna roll back completely to a previous branch. 
you want to change something very minute. That is why GitHub is so powerful. And I just fixed that error. So if you found it like you learned something, make sure you leave a like. Let's keep going here. All right, perfect. So now that we have that set up, we need to do one last step here to deploy the hosting so we no longer see that local host 3000. No more local host 3000. To do so, we're going to do Firebase deploy. Hit enter. Oh, actually, we're not going to go to that URL. We want to have some good practices here. So we want to do two lines. Coming back to the cheat sheet here, just for good practices, we're going to do npm run build. This is the front end. Firebase deploy. This is the back end. This is just for good practice. Run this every single time you want to deploy to an actual live link. And paste it again. This is not completely necessary, but let's just do best practices. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and gut check this by clicking that link that you saw earlier. Okay, cool. Hosting URL. Command C this. And we got the error again. Let's fix it. Anytime you run into errors that are specific to deployment, you're going to be looking at adding very relevant classes such as the major app, the firebase.js, the package.json. I'll go to move y'all. See what else we can add here. I mean, if I accidentally added that, that's not very relevant for the CSS and index.html. And this should be good enough here. We're going to ask a very simple question. I show this so that y'all can do the debugging on your own rather than me just showing you a cookie cutter solution where everything works. Because as you know, with code, Everything always doesn't work. <laughs> All right, so here we're going to do this. Use this terminology as you will, but we're going to say when I deploy a Firebase hosting, I get a blank white screen rather than the rendered app.js. Hit enter. And there we go. It's actually very obvious what we needed to do. So we're going to do firebase.json. Come down here, firebase.json. Command A, command V, command save. Let's try again. We're going to do npm run build. We're going to do Firebase deploy. Enter. There we go. It works now. So we got our actual backend app.webapp URL here. We got our nice little UI that we created in the first tutorial here. We're good to go. Now, if you're like Corbin, I don't like that domain. Dot web app is kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. If you release a software with the dot web app domain, let me know. That's kind of crazy. So if you want a custom domain, I show you how to do that within the school community here. It's in the description down below. Obviously, if you don't care about a custom domain, you don't have to do it. It's only 20 bucks. They'll probably go up over time. If you're interested, check it out. All right, sweet. So now that we've done that, though, let's go and commit this. Uh, we're going to add this to our Git because we've successfully created a nice little branch here for Firebase add. So git add commit. Uh, we're going to say hosting good. And then we'll say git push origin. And it's going to be the branch name. If you forgot your branch name, you can just kind of scroll up here and you'll see it's right here. Plus you can find it at the bottom left here. There we go. So what this will do is we are then going to have in our code here, if I come back over here, we're going to have a PR, pull request. What this is is like, yo, you want to add this to main? Are you sure? So for you to be sure, <laughs> say compare and pull requests. And then what you'll notice is that we can add more information relevant to what we did here. So if you ever need to track backwards, but if everything looks good and just for context, you can kind of see what's changed, like what's going on here. This is all the stuff we added from the previous video or actually this branch and the other video. If it all looks good and you're good to go or say create pull request, better UIs if you hit file changed here and then you can kind of scroll through the directory that you have here. You're like, all right, this looks good. This looks good. Typically, when you work in a team, you'll have reviewers over here. So I might do some videos on that later on. You can check me out here. Uh, for now, though, because it's just me, myself, and I, it's easy. We're going to say merge pull request. Confirm merge. Once we've done that, because of the fact that we don't need this branch anymore, we can just delete it. And of course, we can restore it in the future if we get scared and we're like, yo, I need that branch back. Once we do that, though, this is going to merge to main, which means that we can go ahead and go back to main and update our local code or just the code we have here. So we go git branch. And right now we're in Firebase add. We're gonna do git checkout main. What you'll notice is that when you delete a branch in GitHub, it doesn't delete locally in your machine, which actually can be kind of cool. I like some old, the old version of bumpups.com, like the old software branches, I still keep locally so I can kind of run in the emulator if I wanna see them. For now though, we're gonna get git pull origin main. This is gonna pull all that relevant code that we just did. There we go. You'll notice that we have the little pluses, the little minuses, Etc. And for now, because of the fact that we are good to go, and if I click cursor here, we're updated here. I can go ahead and do git branch, and we're gonna do dash capital D, and this is gonna delete it locally from our system. Git branch dash D, branch name, boom. We have deleted that branch. We're good to go. We're in git main. We're ready for the next video. Next video we're gonna do here together is gonna be auth and our ability to have a user sign in, sign out. This is gonna require a little bit of backend logic with the function of creation of the user with some database as well, to be honest with you. So this is gonna be a more complex tutorial when it comes to the backend, but don't worry, I'll make it easy. We'll do it with AI, we'll be good. Make sure you leave a like, it's completely free, and I'll see you in the next video. No more hosting. We're done with hosting. Bye-bye. Those are two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.